college algebra. This is a video of the first half of lesson 4.3 logarithmic functions. So as we move further into chapter 4, um, we've already covered exponents, so now we're going to get into logarithms and they are the uh, inverse function of exponentials. Okay, so in part A, um, we're just going to use this definition of a logarithm. Okay, A here is considered your base, and it corresponds with the A over here, that's the base of the exponential. Um, X is called the argument, and that happens to be the X right there. Y in this form on the left is the exponent over here on the right. So one of the tasks you'll, be, or you'll have to do in this lesson is switch exponential form to log form and then log form back to exponential form. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the word log. My base is 3, so that's a subscript. And then of 81, and that equals 4. So always remember that your logarithm is equal to your exponent. Okay, so on the other side here, my base is 1 half. It equals the exponent, so negative 3. And then that's going to be 8. Switching back again, my base is 10 of 1,000 equals the exponent 3. My base is 5. My exponent's negative 3. And I wrote that kind of small. 5 to the negative third, and that equals 1 over 125. And then this one, my base is 12 of 12 equals 1. And then over here, 6 to the exponent of 0 equals 1. So you should be able to go back and forth between the two forms. Um, for some of you guys, you might need a little practice there. Um, others of you might zip through that rather easily. Um, you'll have probably multiple choice questions like this and so forth. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to use those properties to solve. And so here's what we're going to do. Our base here is x. Our exponent's negative 2, and that's 16 over 9. All right, um, some things I can do to try to solve this equation. Um, if I multiply or take both sides to the negative first, that will give me x to the second equals 9 over 16. So why did I do that? I did that to get my negative exponent to become positive. That's one technique that I can use when I have an equation. Um, when I do that, that flips the right-hand side over as well. To finish this problem, I would take the square root. And you're dealing with principal square roots, so the answer here is going to be the positive root 3 fourths. For the next one, I'll have 16 to the 3 fourths power equals x. You guys can type that right into your calculator, and that's going to be 8. And for the next one, 36 to the power of x equals the square root of 36. Okay, we had problems like this back in lesson 4-2. In order to solve for x, we need to get these to have the same base, and they actually do. What you need to remember is that a square root is a power of 1 half. So we get x to be 1 half. Okay, here's some properties. Now, some of these might be a little bit hard to read, 
So I'm going to write them off to the side and give you a quick example of each. Okay, so the first one is log base a of 1 equals 0, and that's because a to the 0 is 1. So if you had the problem log base 7 of 1, what does that equal? So let's say that equals x. I would say x would have to be equal to 0. Let me write that differently log a of 7 equals 0. Why is that? Um, I wrote that wrong again. Bear with me. Log base 7 of 1 equals 0. And why is that? Because 7 to the 0 power is 1. Okay, number 2. Log base a of a equals 1. That's because a to the first equals a. So if I saw something like log base 8 of 8, the answer would be 1. 8 to the first is 8. Okay, rule number 3. If I have an argument that is the product of two factors, I can write it as the log of m plus the log of n keeping the base the same. So for example, if I had the log of a of um, x times y, I'm going to have the log base a of x plus the log base a of y. If I had the log base a of, say, 3a, I would have the log base a of 3 plus log base a of a. And log base a of a is 1. Okay, the next rule. If this is divided instead, division is going to go to subtraction. So your example might be something like so that's log base a of 2x minus log base a of 3. Now the 2x is a product. I can take that apart by addition. And so on. So those are the first four rules. And let's see, we also have what we call a power rule. It's number five. So log base a of x to the r. The power rule says the exponent can come down to the front. So for example, if I had log base a of say x to the fifth, that's going to be 5 log base a of x. Or let's say I had log base 7 of the square root of x. That's log base 7, x to the 1 half. I switch that to a, an exponential. Bring my 1 half to the front. There you go. The sixth rule is one that I don't use very often, but you will see it in your homework. So um, it says a to the log base a of x equals x. So for example, if I had something like 8 to the log base 8 of 3y, that's just going to equal 3y. I don't use that one very often. Okay, so let's try these under example three. I'm gonna split that apart. That's log base seven of eight times six. So that's gonna be log base seven of eight plus log base seven of six. 
Now this one I would actually stop right here on. This next one would be log base 6 of 12 plus, uh-oh, not plus, but how about a minus log base 6 of 5. Now this one I'm going to go a little bit further on. I know 12 is 2 times 6. And as I continue on, um, I did that because my base and that 6, they're going to come out as a 1. So watch here. All right. This right here is a 1. So I'm going to rewrite my answer then as log base 6 of 2 plus 1 minus log base 6 of 5. Now, why didn't I do that on part A? Well, the number 8 doesn't have any factors in common with a 7, nor does the 7 have any common factors with 6. But on the second problem, I know 6 and 12 have common factors, so that's why I broke it down. And part C. This is a cube root of 9. Okay, so anytime you have a radical, you're going to want to write it as um, an exponential, okay? And then that goes in the front. Now I'm going to look at that and say 2 and 9 have no factors in common, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Let's see, let me get all my answers circled for you. Okay, I'm going to pause this video right here. Um, YouTube only allows me for free to upload 15 minute videos. So I'm going to cut this one here and then start again for the second part of this first part of your lesson. Stay tuned.